Dr. Marin Sadeghi is here now delivering the cardiovascular highlights for this year's meeting. Let's hear a bit of an overview of your talk. Thank you, Dina. So this year we have a large number of abstracts from different countries around the world and uh, I could sort of classify the abstracts into three categories. And the first category is focused on sort of refining what we do daily in our clinical practice, uh, mostly on myocardial perfusion imaging and infiltrative heart disease cardiomyopathy. The second part of the abstracts are about uh, how we um, sort of broaden the scope of nuclear imaging in cardiology, cardiovascular medicine. And uh, there are some incremental uh, advances which are very important uh, that hopefully I will review in during my highlights lecture. And the third part of this is sort of people are using, uh, investigators are using nuclear imaging to advance science. And there were, there are some very nice uh, abstracts on how to, for example, uh, evaluate glucose metabolism in specific situation and uh, uh, new uh, models of valvular disease. Uh, so combined, this is a very diverse group of, groups, group of abstracts, but they add, each one of them adds really to the science and uh, advances the field. Heart disease, the number one killer. So clearly coming up with better ways to find it and treat it is so important. Can you discuss some of the really exciting developments in terms of research? Um, research and maybe clinical use also. Uh, over the past year, there has been a number of, uh, past few years, a number of advances in our understanding of the role of inflammation in atherosclerosis and how diverse, uh, not a uh, essentially uniform process this is. So there is research, ongoing research also to try to sort this out and uh, uh, come up with uh, sort of targeted therapies to treat the residual risk that we have after treating hyperlipidemia in, in, in atherosclerosis. Other uh, important areas of research include, for example, uh, um, less invasive approaches to valvular disease, which is a major problem. And uh, uh, there were some, there are some devices, percutaneous devices that are coming up to essentially reduce uh, the burden of treatment and make it easier for patients who are sicker and maybe even for less sick patients. For atrial fibrillation, we have now new devices and there is uh, extensive uh, research in trying to see if we can reduce the morbidity of atrial fibrillation by introducing uh, these devices and wearables that can sort of uh, give us information about the, uh, how much disease there is and the burden of disease. And uh, finally, there are new classes of drugs that have emerged, PCSK9 inhibitors, uh, are, is uh, one example and there is more re research and more information about their, uh, their benefit. But also in diabetes, which is a major cause of cardiovascular disease, now we have treatments that have been shown to reduce cardiovascular mortality. And I think that this, these are very exciting areas of uh, essentially advances and also areas of research that will help uh, reduce cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. And as we look further into the future, can you discuss what you see in nuclear cardiology? So what I see in nuclear cardiology is I mean, we are used to using myocardial perfusion imaging as the main, uh, main test that we use in nuclear cardiology. I think that uh, with the new data ha that have emerged in recent years, over the next maybe decade, uh, CT and geography will play a more important role in sort of triaging patients with chest pain and sort of the two modalities will function as uh, complementary. Uh, another problem that we have is sort of diversity of uh, cardiomyopathy. And uh, we need imaging tools to sort of better uh, characterize cardiomyopathy. And I think that these tools will emerge in the next five to 10 year years to mm -hmm. sort of distinguish different types of uh, cardiomyopathy and sort of tailored therapy uh, to each type of therapy rather than just giving the same treatment to all patients with cardiomyopathy. And uh, on the vascular imaging side, I also I think that we will have more and more uh, information on how to improve the detection of the disease and sort of 
uh, track response to therapy, let's say in atherosclerosis, in aneurysm, in and also in valvular disease. So these are sort of some broad, broad areas that I think we will see a lot of progress in the next decade. Positives on the horizon, Dr. Sadegi, thank you very much. Thank you very much.